Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. In this lesson we're going to look at expanding our number system, so classifying numbers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. I can classify numbers by their system or number system or systems even. Some numbers can be classified by several different ways uh, and that's okay. That's what we're going to be seeing on this stuff. So this means by the end of this lesson you should be able to classify any number by looking at it or even just with a calculator making one quick calculation and then seeing what it is. So this first type of number system um, we don't actually have to memorize but it's good to know just so we can see that there's lots of different types of numbers. So the first type of number system are natural numbers. Natural numbers are great because they occur <coughs> excuse me occur in nature and Math people, like me, we hate writing the actual word natural because it's a really long word. Uh, and the word numbers, which is why I use the number symbol. No, that is not a hashtag. So, we have a symbol for natural numbers. And this may come as a surprise, but it's an N that is extraordinarily fancy. Like this one. That's like extra. Yes, if you're going to use a symbol. Now... Let's just start looking at some of the natural numbers that are natural and occur in nature, which we've talked about already, which is why we love them so much. Natural numbers would be the number like one. Two. No, one to start with. The next one, though, would be two. After two would be three. Now, we've got to take our time to make sure we're understanding this. Some of you guys notice a pattern, and that's good. Seven. Okay. But the next number is four. Whoa, no, really? Yeah. No, I'm serious. Okay, now this, that, that may come as a surprise to some, or an aha moment. But the next number, this is more intriguing. Five. Oh my gosh, that is mind blowing. Holy cow. I thought it was eight. I was worried. I was worried. But you got it. The next one, bam, seven. What? <laughs> what? I think you skipped one. Skipped uh, No, I got one. It's right there. After seven, oh. <laughs> six. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. We're just getting started, though. How long are we doing this? 100. <laughs> we should go to 100. I'm just going to put three dots. <clears throat> the three dots after that indicate that it goes on forever in this same pattern until you get to infinity. Then you have to stop. Wait, but he, but he, that's what <laughs> now, oh, well, I mean, that, you know, if you want to be Buzz Lightyear, that's one thing. But as far as we know, in all of history and time, there's only one person that has counted to infinity. No, everyone. No. Actually, this person has done it twice. It's a computer. One, two, infinity. Oh, come on, man. It's... It's Chuck Norris. <laughs> Let's go to the next classification. After natural numbers, we have what they call whole numbers. Now again, whole numbers can be represented with an extraordinarily fancy symbol, just like natural numbers were. And this one, once again, an extraordinary surprise. It's a fancy W. I knew. Whole numbers. Um... Let's start with one. After one is three. two. It's close. Four. Next, three. 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 Seven. Here's the great news: Five. is in this pattern, it goes on forever and ever. However, we may look at this and we see that uh, well, there's no real difference between the whole numbers and the natural numbers, but there is a difference. Zero. Yep. As it turns out, zero does not occur in nature, but it does occur in holes. Maybe because it looks like a hole. I don't know. Let's go to the next set of numbers. After whole numbers, then we run into what are called integers. Integers. Integers are also represented by an extraordinarily fancy I. Oh man, <laughs> it's a Z. No, no, it's 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 like a 
It's a, it's a really fancy eye. It's a, it's a, a bad 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 bad. Now, a fancy if you are seeing a Z, you know, you may, and that would be fine. But um, if you did a straight up and down line, then it's not fancy enough is the problem. So we just, we put it at an angle, we made it extremely fancy, bam. Let's go through the integers, starting with zero. Now after zero would be one, and then two, and then three, and so forth. Now, again, this, this looks like the whole numbers. However, there is a difference. The integers are all the whole numbers, but also they're opposites. So we have negative values now in the integers. So we go back to negative three, and then we'll go back all the way to the left to infinity. The next classification. All right, with the integers, um, we also have another set of numbers which are called rational numbers. So rational numbers are represented with what we would consider a fancy R. That's a Q. Well, no, Qs are kind of like deformed R's. So this one is... No, that's an R. You guys see, it, it's got the leg coming out of it, right? Like the R does, but it's been deformed, so you think it's a Q. In actuality, it's an R. Rational numbers can be expressed in several different ways. I'm just going to type this one in. Um, rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as proper or improper fractions. As decimals, they would be repeating or terminating. There we go. Um, eh, I'm too lazy. So um, this would be rational numbers. The good news about all these types of numbers is they, they fall into a new category, um, which we call real numbers. That is correct. These are all real numbers, of course. There is a symbol for real numbers. And yes, it is a fancy R. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me try that there we yeah, go. That's, that's, that's more fancy. Okay, right? that's All right. Now, in this category, we have the rational numbers. There are such things as irrational numbers also. There is a symbol for irrational numbers, but I hate it, so we're not going to see it. Because it's many symbols. It actually looks more like an equation than anything else. No. So we're gonna we're going to skip it. No. 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 Irrational numbers. Let's define these. Irrational numbers would be any value that is a decimal that never terminates or repeats. So just a few examples of irrational numbers would be something like the value pi. Thank you. Or the square root of 2. Or the square root of 3. And there's, there's actually an infinite number of these, but um, we don't want to focus on these too much for now. Uh, in terms of classification, if I looked at the number 3, uh, we can see that 3 is a list. Actually, let's write that down. So this is an example with the number 3. If I said we need to classify these, uh, classify 3 in all of its categories, we can see that it is natural. It's a whole number. And it also fits in the integers. But, could I write 3 as a improper fraction? Yes. yes, I could. So it is also rational. All right. For this, so we have all these classifications. And we've kind of created what they call Venn diagram, which is what we're actually going to do next. So people love Venn diagrams for some reason. Or they hate them. It's either way. So, I mean, they usually use circles or ovals for Venn diagrams. Um, I feel compelled against my will to show you it. So here we go. So this black box would represent what we would call the real numbers. Right there. Now, in the real numbers, we can split these up. And part of the real numbers would be considered um, rational numbers. Now, we can continue to categorize the rational numbers separately into, from rational numbers, we would take the integers. 
From the integers, we can go even deeper into the whole numbers, and then even deeper into the natural numbers. Now notice the real numbers box is not completely taken up. That is because we have the rational numbers, which are not rational. And this would be a Venn diagram that describes the relationships of these. All right, so at the bottom of your page, the front page here, we have this table that's starting the table. Take a minute, talk about it with the neighbor, and see if you can categorize these, all of them. All right? One minute with your neighbor, go. All right, so we'll provide the justifications on these ones. Uh, but on the next ones, since we're just kind of rushing through this part, um, we won't worry about that for now, okay? Except for a few of them, I should say. So this first one, 2 over 3, um, that is not a whole number. It's not an integer. It is rational, however, and rational numbers are all real. So the justification on this one, I would say that it's a fraction. 0 0.25, this is a terminating decimal because it doesn't show any decimal values after 5. So it's not a whole number, it's not an integer, it's a rational number that is also real because again this is a terminating decimal. So it's a terminating decimal. Negative 2. <clears throat> negative 2 is not a whole number because it's negative, but it is an integer because it has no decimals with it. Uh, which means it's also rational. I could write that as a fraction, which means it's also real. And again, I would write that because it has no decimal. The square root of 5, if I plug this into the calculator, I'm going to get something that is really hard to look at because it's so ugly. It's a decimal value, which makes it r irrational, and all irrational numbers are also real. So the justification for this one, for me, is because it is an ugly decimal. So 10, 10 is not negative, it has no decimal, so we know it's a whole number, it's an integer, it's rational, and it's also real. Again, why? Again, there's no decimal on this one. Zero. Zero, we know from the list, is a whole number. It's an integer, which means it's rational and also real. The justification, it's zero. All right, the square root of 10, this one is an irrational number that is real. Now, this decimal is extre extremely ugly. Another way to identify this is because it's the square root of a non-perfect square. And we'll talk about those more in the next lesson. The next one, the square root of 36. Uh, if we were to plug this into a calculator, we would get 6. So this one is not an ugly decimal. This is a whole value, and that, that's because 36 is a perfect square. So 6 is a whole number, which is an integer, and it's also rational and real. Why? Because 6. All right, you guys take a minute. Try this one with your neighbor. One minute, go. So these are the answers. Now you may be confused on that first one. Again, if you type this into a calculator, you would get negative 11, which is an integer, which is rational and real. Pi and negative, well, pi, first of all, is an irrational number because the decimal is extremely hard to look at because it's so ugly. Now, if you had negative three of those, you just have negative three of those uglies, and it's still ugly, okay? So that's why those are irrational. Um, on this last one, though, 0 0.2654, this one shows that um, the decimal is repeating. And we saw from the definition of rational numbers that it, it can be a repeating decimal. So if you see this bar notation, it's automatically rational. And the reason for that is because I can change any rational or repeating decimal into a fraction. All right, you guys take a minute and finish this table off with your neighbor. One minute, go. So
So I'll just starting off with these first few that hopefully were kind of easy. This, this first one we can see it has a pattern, but it's not repeating or terminating. Okay, so even though there is a pattern, it's not a repeating pattern, so that one is irrational. On the bottom there, the number that represents a loss of five yards, that would be negative five, which is an integer. It's not whole because it's negative, so it's also rational and real. These other ones, let's discuss these. So the side length of a square with an area of two, the side length would be the area, but square rooted. And we've talked about that before. The square root of two, if we plug that into a calculator, is extraordinarily ugly. So it is irrational and real. You were just so mean. Would you right. call one of your students? All right, the side length of a square with an area of nine. So if the area was nine, the side length would be the square root of nine, which is three. That's a whole number that's also an integer, rational, and real. The next one, the number halfway between 3 and 4 would be 3 and 1 half, or 3.5, if you like that one better. And both of those would be rational and real. All right, so again, the objective, I can classify numbers by their system. We should be able to do that with any number, and um, we'll, we'll look at that again later on in the next lesson. So thanks again for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please subscribe to the channel and like the video, and just make a quick comment below. We'll see you guys in the next one.